think looking at it objectively as much as one can, um, a few months after the event, as we are sitting here now, I think on one hand, a lot of progress was made on some of the negotiating agenda issues, issues around um, finance and technology and adaptation. There was a lot of good progress made. But there was not the, there was not the decisive decision taken uh, regarding the mitigation agenda that everyone was looking for. So what people were hoping was for a legally binding agreement that would commit um, the nations of the world to a target and timetable for reducing emissions of greenhouse gases to a level that would avoid dangerous climate change. So in a sense, the, the negotiations failed to achieve that legally binding agreement, largely because of issues around the mitigation agenda. Yes, the, the issue of ethics uh, is not often discussed when we're talking about the climate change problem. People, of course, often get confused about ethics. They normally think about ethics at a personal level, but uh, in a climate change context, we're really talking about social ethics, i.e. What, what we collectively think are our duties and responsibilities to others in terms of thinking about the consequences of what we do or, or don't do regarding climate change. I, th I think the, the fundamental reason why the, the Copenhagen uh, conference failed to get agreement on mitigation uh, is because of the simple fact that in the short term there's very little of any economic joy for anyone in, in reducing emissions from greenhouse gases. And this is because our current modes of production are so locked in to forms of energy production and use which are based upon fossil fuel and because of what humans do on land. We live on the land, land and its resources is a factor in economic production and it causes emissions from, from ecosystems such as forests. Mm. Uh, it's very difficult for any country to dramatically reduce its emissions of greenhouse gases from those two primary sources, burning fossil fuel and, and uh, emissions from land carbon. And this is because it's really going to require some fundamental changes in how we produce energy and use the land. And in the short term, uh, that's going to produce economic burdens. Um, and uh, there are very few national governments who, who feel they're in a position to, to do that. Why is this an ethical issue? Well, uh, if ethics is about considering what our duties and responsibilities are to others, we need to think about the consequences of what we do or don't do when it comes to mitigating greenhouse gas emissions on others. Well, who are the others? Certainly it's people in other countries and also it's future generations. The longer we look ahead in time, the greater is the potential harm from human-forced rapid climate change. So the greater the consequences of our actions or inactions. You know, the, the fundamental uh, decisions that governments have to make about mitigation really are ethical ones. Uh, we have to decide uh, how much to reduce our fossil fuel emissions by. The amount that we um, lower it by will determine how much climate change we do or don't have and hence how much harm will or won't come to future generations. Secondly, we have to decide when that will occur. The longer we wait to take action, the more costly it will be to future generations and the potential for more harm to future generations. The sooner we take action, the less harm and cost to future generations. That's an ethical issue. And there's a third ethical issue. Once we've decided by how much we're prepared to lower our emissions and by when we're going to do it, each year, there's a certain amount of emissions we're entitled to emit. So the third eth ethical issue is how are we going to distribute that entitlement amongst the nations of the world? 
These are really ethical issues and they were actually the main stumbling blocks to the Copenhagen Agreement. But they're not presented to us as ethical issues, they're presented to us as economic or political issues or technological issues. To solve the climate change problem, we have to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to a scientifically determined safe level. Globally, i.e., when you look at all the emissions coming from human sources in the world, it's a, it's a lot. It's about 7.5 billion tonnes. In, in order to stabilise climate change, that number, that total annual emission, has to be reduced over the course of time to a much smaller number. Actually, it needs to get close to zero, but then over time it can come up to about 2.5 billion tonnes. So it's, there's where we are now, year 2010, seven and a half billion tonnes, and there's where we need to go in the future. We need to reduce that to 2.5 billion tonnes. What's our journey in getting there? We can describe it by a curve. Each year we have to reduce the total amount of emissions uh, until they get close to zero, and then they can come up, it looks like, to, to that number. So if you think of, a, if, uh, and I've drawn a graph that illustrates this, so that's the contraction curve. And in the negotiations, the negotiators are talking about a target for 2020 and a target for 2050. That's really two points on the curve. The area under the curve is what we're entitled to emit. They're the greenhouse gases that are, that are permissible under this, under this curve. So the question is, the ethical question is, how, what principle do we use to distribute those permissible emissions represented by the area under the curve amongst the nations of the world? Up until now, the, permi the, the emissions that we have emitted have mainly been used by developed countries. Going forward, Who's going to get those permissible emissions? Is it still going to be developed countries or is it going to be developing countries? And if it's going to be both, how are we going to distribute them? This is actually an ethical issue of distributive justice. <laughs>